probably the most important works of an ancient art form present on our planet, petroglyphs are vastly becoming an open interpretation of human activity. But think not that humans were doodling and think more that they were documenting something affecting their environment, their nature, and their well-being. Across planet Earth, petroglyphs are present. All across the Earth, they appear to be very similar. From Europe to Australia to the United States and Asia, petroglyphs are present in very discrete phases that are utterly unmistakable. These phases are of a cataclysmic manifestation in the sky so drastic that it affects everything we know even today. Wait till you hear this. Largely found in an outdoor setting, perhaps in a cave or an overhang, but no matter where they are found, the artist it seems had a vantage view of the event, perhaps taking no more than a few hours to etch in some cases, days in others, and at places like Newspaper Rock, we see a documentation over a very long period of time. This is the message that is reaching through time to tell us something about our past, a past that we had almost forgot about, almost like we slipped into a fantasy to deal with the trauma and the stories in our religious traditions directly relate to the event documented in the petroglyph record by these ancient observers. The dating of petroglyphs is almost impossible. Some have been carbon dated based on the presence of wasp nests to be over 7,000 years old, while others may be closer to only being 2,000 years old. The broad spectrum of our understanding diminishes when confronted by these anomalies, but as one petroglyph fluctuates to another by 5,000 years, at least tells us that the events lasted over a very long time and the phases must have had breaks where the figure remained dominant yet godlike in nature. Yet to us today, it's our belief in this event that dominates us so drastically. To the ancients, there was a presence and this is what the petroglyphs are showing us. Dismissed by most as the work of an abstract mind, early human activity in a primitive setting. This is our arrogance. How can we both be amazed by megalithic structures dating over 10,000 years old and then completely ridicule that achievement by suggesting this was the culmination of their simple minds could muster? Two-dimensional geometrics and stickmen. The ancient artist is collectively trying to tell us something much greater than, in fact, our imaginations have been able to grasp thus far. Ancient earthlings were carving in petroglyphs exactly what was going on in the sky. This is a sky event documentation and it is found all over the entire world. It's everywhere and it comes as a plasmatic instability, inspiring fear and worship in the minds of the cataclysmic observers. Today, when the sun releases energy, we see the southern and northern lights. It inspires wonder, and it shows us how our fragile existence is protected by an earth that is the cradle of our survival. These light patterns are the result of charged particles from the solar wind interacting with our planet's magnetic field. Depending on just which atmospheric element is encountered at the time, determines the color of the display. Green and high altitude red are due to oxygen and the mid altitude red is from nitrogen. Since the aurora are at the north and south magnetic poles, there are displays both north and south of our planet simultaneously. Aurora have been reported to be accompanied by odor or ionized oxygen or ozone. This is the same odor you notice from an electric motor. Sounds ranging from faint swishing to what has been likened to the clanking of budding ram horns have also been associated as well. The whimsical dancing lights of the modern day aurora has almost as much impact on our daily lives as do the wispy sheets of Virga that never reach the burning desert sands below. The high energy aurora, on the other hand, could be more catastrophic than a category five hurricane and more threatening than even the grandest lightning show you can imagine. Mere snippets locked into the psychic mythology of mankind 
coupled with the faithfully engraved and painted rock art left behind by our ancestors, is all that remains of these long forgotten world changing events documented in the petroglyphic record. Our normally mild mannered aurora results from electrical currents or ionized particles flowing towards Earth and then into the polar cusp of our planet's magnetic field. With increasing energy, these linear currents interact with Earth's magnetic field and develop a spiral pattern referred to as Birkeland currents. And so the manifestation continues. As the spiral tightens, these electric currents pinch off to form a series of bright round plasma spheroids. Intense lightning would be evidence radiating from the top and bottom of the structure as well as the spheroids themselves. These spheroids develop further into a levitating stack of donut shaped toruses which radiate intense visible and ultraviolet light, x-rays and other high energy electromagnetic radiation. As the incoming energy increases, the stress developed forced the torrids to violently merge and the structure, when over-energized, could then catastrophically self-destruct. As the downward flow of plasma encounters the high-density atmosphere, its supersonic velocity will slow rapidly, creating a ring of shockwave fronts. The sonic booms thus created expand outwards from the base of the column in the atmosphere around the poles. Displays of bird-like images and what appear to be goat horns are also generated along the expanding shock front. From lab research and studying the evidence left by ancient observers, it appears that as the energy increases, the high-energy plasma column in the polar cusp passes through various consistent phases. Since electric currents are prone to pushing, the appearance of the display would therefore fluctuate back and forth from one energy phase to another. The upper terminus or outer rim of the auroral column is usually represented in rock art as a very large round bright disc. Plasma is mainly concentrated in the outer surface of the funnel with a central often red colored axis. Sometimes it is drawn with the auroral column below it and depicted as a series of concentric rings occasionally with spikes emanating outward from the outer circle. This is often misidentified as an image of the sun, which is never seen as anything other than an unusually yellow disk, except rarely during a solar eclipse. Surrounding the funnel or plasma bundles or rays, starting from 56, then reduce in number to four as the energy increases. They are represented in the rock art record as pinwheels, sailing ships, and even bullhorns, and is the inspiration of the native Indian headdresses. From the Squatter Man Manifest, ancient observers began to document these very discrete phases in the manifestation. Wrongly assumed to be stick men or squatter man, they are actually the development of a torus field from the spiral. The great figures once seen in the sky to be godlike in nature are inspired by this event. The storytelling of the squatter man assimilates from Mesopotamia and Egypt into Greece and Iran. It reaches us today as a matter of fact, but who are we to ever question what we were born to believe? Because the truth is the key to understanding who we are, no matter where that may lead. The veil of silence is being ripped apart and it's human destiny to break free from these chains of silence that have blinded us for so very long. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.